Today's presentation is going to be about WebRTC, um, which is interesting because we've been talking a lot about Action Cable and WebSockets. Uh, so this is kind of a good parallel to see what are some other real-time technologies you can add to our Rails apps. Uh, raise your hand real quick if you've ever actually, if you've even heard of WebRTC. Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you ever used it? Is it today? Cool. How many of you ever read the spec? Okay. Good. Me neither. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> so. All right, so that's me. Uh, my name is Riaz Varani. I'm a freelance web developer. Uh, that's my new freelance site. And that's my blog. So I just want to do a quick check. Uh, raise your hand if you've got the Zoho thing working. Only a few of you? Interesting. Okay, let's look at the number of you. All right. So if you want to ask questions, ask them through it. So first I want to start with how did we get here? Uh, this is my, my favorite gift of Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Just awesome. You just let it play forever. <laughs> so I, I decided to write a poem for you, uh, very light on technical details, but very heavy on cheesiness. Um, once upon a time, we had slow internet limited to ISDN and dial-up. We used AOL Instant Messenger and Real Player. Hell, Google was still a startup. But then the gods gave us faster internet. We started a video chat and watched endless videos of stupid house cats. Yet the browser was still a fail. We needed Skype and Flash to talk to Grandma. Nope, there was no native HTML solution for our Nana. So, WebRTC, baby. I wrote that in like 10 minutes. So, <laughs> so that's why we have WebRTC, right? Why does this technology even get invented? Um, all of us have video chat at some point. Most of us are using an app that's native to a device, having to install an application, um, having to install some sort of Java applet. And that's where the impetus for this technology came about. It's not limited to the browser, but it's a specific API that defines how we can do voice calling, video chat, and P2P file sharing. Um, and it was really aimed at being able to do that in the browser without any third party extensions, uh, namely Flash. It's the most common one. So here are the key pieces behind it, right? There's tons and tons of detail here, but for a browser to be compliant with supporting WebRTC, get user media, which gives the browser camera and microphone access, peer connection, which is being able to send and receive media, and data channel, which is if you want to send and receive data that is not audio and video. So what it's not, and this is kind of interesting, right? So WebRTC is about peer-to-peer -peer audio, video, and data. WebSockets, or Action Cable, is really about a bi-directional pipe between the client and the server, right? It can sort of sometimes, if you use like Pusher or any of these third-party tools that do WebSockets, let you do peer-to-peer, -peer, but it's not really intended to. All right, so server side. What are the main components we have here? Well, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, right? Well, when we can get a peer-to-peer -peer connection, the way that works is peer A contacts a server called a stun server. Um, I don't know what that stands for, but essentially it allows both of the different both peers to kind of identify each other and get a direct connection. This works really well for bi-directional communications because you're only having one upload and download stream. Um, sometimes that doesn't quite work. And the main reason is there's just network issues that prevent that from working. So usually when that's detected, we go to another server called a term server, and that's actually relaying video back and forth. Um, that's also used in a lot of cases where you want to have one user broadcast to a lot of users and still sort of stay within the realm of WebRTC. And this is, uh, yeah, I wanted to find out how often this happens, and it turns out it happens about 20% of the time. I'll be honest, if I went into a lot of code details, I know we haven't really seen much code, this would get really complicated. Um, there's sort of some high level APIs, but then making it reliable, making it um, work in all the browsers, can get really, really complicated. So let's do a quick demo. Um, and in order for me to actually do video audio chat, I need to have a partner, so I asked my friend Diego to help me out. Um, and I set up a quick demo Oops, make it up. on a website. This is really just HTML. Um, and it's connected to Firebase, and it's using some libraries. So I'm going to come here and set up a new conference so you guys can see me. And Diego is going to the same website. And if it works live, is it working, Diego? <laughs> it worked for like 15 times when we tested it out before we started. There we go. There's Diego. Hey. Um, <laughs> um, so rather than going too deep into the code behind this, this is a peer-to-peer -peer connection, which means there is no server relaying the video. It's actually uh, using a library that can essentially do those stun functions of communicating our IP addresses over Firebase. Um, and over that, we're getting a peer-to-peer -peer connection, and my video is going directly to him, he's coming directly to mine. 
So, real time video chat for everybody, right? Like this is like the happy ending. Everyone's <laughs> super, super excited. Like we're gonna go all add this to our apps tomorrow. Um, well, here's the reality. Uh, its strengths are its weaknesses, right? So it's open source, it's backed by a community, um, it's sort of really fast moving, it's trying to use the latest codex, right? That's also its weaknesses. And it's the weakness of, I think, a lot of projects that are on the web. This is the weakness. No one can agree on anything, right? Except for Chrome and Firefox, IE basically has never supported it. And we'll talk a little bit in a second about an alternative spec they introduced. Safari has, I think, had it on its backlog of things they're working on for two years. Um, <laughs> Chrome for Android supports it, right? But you can't get it into like the mainline Safari. So, uh, real quick, kind of kind of side thing, Object RTC. Um, this is something that was created and backed by an individual company. Got really Amber Alert. Uh oh. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a third party here. Um, so, so the main reason that this got any traction at all, Microsoft pushed it, was that uh, WebRTC uses something called Session Description Protocol. It's a very loose API, and they wanted something much stricter. Um, Google, obviously, is the main backer of WebRTC, and just because they wanted to get WebRTC moving, they have unilaterally said they are going to make something called WebRTC NV, that, I guess, new version that will merge in Object RTC. Um, I don't think Microsoft really wants that, but Microsoft is the only one using this. And this is kind of, honestly, if you read the web, this is basically Microsoft's opinion. Like, this is basically why they did this. They, they could have very easily used WebRTC and not gotten really finicky over something that was a very, very specific uh, part of the API. So, you're right, there are no easy solutions, right? Out of the box where you add five lines of code. And it kind of goes down this great graphic that I found, which is, Here's how much experience you have, or you need, and then here's how you are dependent upon third parties. Um, so in one sense, you can kind of do all of it yourself, and the other one is you just find a plugin, right? Something like Twilio, that's a widget that you can plug in and it can give you all the capabilities, but you're paying them per minute usually. So here are some popular providers to do all that stuff. The two that are like the granddaddies, or the one that's the really big granddaddies, is OpenTalk. Um, they charge per minute, uh, very similar to Twilio in terms of pricing, and it's a drop-in widget and you get what you need. You can even do broadcast with them and they'll handle all the turn stuff and broadcast to thousands of people at a time and pretty reliable. Um, you can do kind of what I did, which is I merged uh, the libraries by this really popular guy. I don't know, he's out of Pakistan and he writes insane numbers of WebRTC libraries. It's really weird. I don't know where he gets it. But he's like got thousands of stars to get up. Um, one of these libraries with either your own or a provider, third party provider that's only providing those stun and turn servers. And some of these also recommend like their own servers that you can deploy on Ubuntu or whatever. So maybe this is gonna be the year, right? Maybe this is gonna be their break sale. WebRTC, I have seen incredible amount of hype for it for many, many years. Um, these are all articles that are really recent within the last six months. Um, and a lot of times it's gotten really heavy usage. Like I think Facebook Messenger uses it uh, for their stuff. Uh, Google obviously uses it. Um, and a lot of even the tools that are sort of installed in your desktop, like a Skype, will use it behind the scenes because it's a really good protocol to use, but it's still behind, you know, they, they need to have a container that can run natively on the operating system in the browser. It's still not universal, universally supported, right? You can't use it in Safari, you can't use it in IE. Uh, maybe not, right? So, uh, so only 4% of participants, according to some, a recent technology benchmark, are actually using WebRTC today, and this is gonna be the always, you know, eternal problem, right? If you can't get all the browsers on board, it's never gonna work. So that's, that's the end, it's a pretty brief presentation. Um, any questions? Anyone enter any questions? I'm curious. Oh, no. <laughs> according to this, 71% of you are engaged. <laughs> yeah. Slack just added video. Is this RTC? It's very likely something they're implementing behind the scenes. Um, they are using, I think, the technology that was behind uh, Screen Hero, which was WebRTC based. Um, but they, again, they have required install installation of their own plugin. Um, and Slack is going to be installed as well, or they're going to use, I think they use Electron, and Electron is WebRTC libraries. Oh. All right. This video has been sponsored by Rietta Incorporated. Learn more today at rietta.com.